Ethiopian ambassador to Paris, Henuk Tafara, dubs the concern of Sudan and Egypt over GERD misplaced. And Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov tells Egypt not to undermine AU-led negotiation on the GERD. Hello and welcome to our Disney News Hour with the news. I'm Shifarra Olagom. The members of the TPLF junta, who have been operating in eight areas, have been destroyed. That's according to Lieutenant General Baja Dabali. Briefing journalists today about the current situation of the fighting in Tigray, Baja said the Ethiopian government used its full capacity to destroy the clique once and for all. The operation, he said, has quashed the clique's attempt to reorganize and fight back. TPLF is a lost cause now, said Baja, adding that many of its militias and those youngsters who have been deceived by the clique to fight along with it have surrendered with their clashing cops. Regarding the border dispute with Sudan, Baja affirmed that Ethiopia has no intention to go to war with Sudan and the matter can be settled through negotiation. But if worse comes to worst, the Ethiopian Defense Force is always ready to defend its sovereignty, Baja underlined. Now, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dan Makama Konen, and Minister of Water, Irrigation, and Energy, Selesha Bekala, briefed African ambassadors in Addis Ababa, regarding the AU-led trilateral ministerial meeting between Ethiopia, Egypt, and Sudan on the GERD. In the briefing, the two ministers highlighted the issues discussed at the Kinshasa meeting and Ethiopia's perspectives on the matter. Ethiopia strongly believes that the AU-led trilateral negotiation is the only viable way to reach a win-win outcome. The ministers stressed that cooperation and the spirit of African Brotherhood are the best option for the management and utilization of the waters of the Nile. Damaka has expressed his disappointment on attempts of Egypt and the Sudan, who claim the GERD as a threat to Arab water security, with all riparian countries are Africans, including Egypt and the Sudan. Therefore, the minister emphasized that such polarization is not acceptable and encouraged the diplomats not to fall into these traps. The ministers underlined that in line with the communique issued at the conclusion of the meeting of the African Union Bureau of the Assembly in July 2020, the most practical and workable way for a successful negotiation is first to agree on the first feeling and related operations and then to proceed to a comprehensive agreement on the utilization of the waters of the Nile. The ambassadors on their part expressed their profound thanks for the briefing and emphasized the importance of reaching a win-win outcome on the GERD through the AU-led negotiation based on the principle of African solutions to African problems. They further appreciated Ethiopia's determination to resolve the Ethiopia-Sudan border issues peacefully. Ethiopian ambassador to Paris, Henuk Tafara, told France 24 that heightened concerns of Egypt and Sudan over the GERD are misplaced since the dam does not affect the flow of the water. Expressing Ethiopia's firm position in settling the matter with the AU-led negotiation, Ambassador Henuk delineated that completing the dam is a matter of life and death for Ethiopia. Sintayu Tamrat has more. It has been a decade since Ethiopia started the construction of its Grand Renaissance Dam on the Abai River.
Following the commencement of the East Africa's mega hydropower dam project, the hydropolitics of the Horn region has progressively mounted, and there have been a decade-long negotiation among the three countries, Ethiopia, Egypt, and Sudan. Even the recent negotiation effort by the AU has borne no fruits owing to a new proposal from Egypt and Sudan. In relation with this, Ethiopian ambassador to Paris, Henok Tefara, told France 24 that completing the GERD is a matter of life and days for Ethiopia. We agree so much so that Ethiopia, which generates about 86 percent of the Nile waters, currently benefits from zero drop of water. For us, it's a matter of life and death. 65 million people in Ethiopia, that's approximately the population of France, have no access to electricity. This situation cannot go on. So as a matter of survival, we believe a win-win solution is possible and that can benefit not just Ethiopia, but the region or the riparian countries as a whole. The ambassador hopes that the EU-led negotiation can bring a win-win solution to the dispute if all parties have good faith. We are confident that through negotiation a win-win solution can be found. We have an AU-African Union-led process that is in place. Uh, we believe that this uh, dam, which, will, which is built solely to generate electricity, meaning it will not retain any water except for the period of filling the reservoir. This dam will benefit not only Ethiopia, it will also benefit the Sudan, it will also benefit Egypt. So really, uh, we feel that uh, the concerns are misplaced. Uh, we can all benefit from it. I think that what has to be understood is that this dam is meant to generate electricity and electricity alone. So the flow of the water will not be affected. The heightened concerns of Egypt and Sudan are unjustifiable because most of the technical issues have been resolved, the ambassador noted. Ethiopia has come a long way to satisfy most concerns of Sudan and Egypt during the negotiations, he added. I think all the technical issues can be resolved, and most of it actually has been resolved when the dam is filled, during which period it is filled. We have gone to great lengths to satisfy many of the concerns of our Egyptian and Sudanese brothers and sisters. Therefore, I don't think that the, the, the hype and the, uh, the uh, heightened concerns are, are, are really uh, justified. Uh, we can come up with a solution that can satisfy all of us. And again, uh, what we are trying to change is a historical injustice whereby we, Ethiopia, generating 86% of the water, using none of it, are asking and are going to use it to satisfy our basic needs, our basic development needs. Ethiopians have the right to live decently, just like uh, our brothers in Egypt and our brothers in, in the Sudan. Ethiopia is currently preparing for the second phase reservoir filling of GERD, which has seen over 79% completion. Now, the Russian Foreign Minister, Sergei Lavrov, unequivocally points out that the issue of the GERD should be resolved amicably through dialogue. In a joint press briefing he gave with Egyptian counterpart Sami Shukri in Cairo, Lavrov said Russia wants the three countries to respect the AU-led negotiation and settle their differences with an African solution. Kassam Chani has the full account from AP. In his recent visit to Cairo, Russia's Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov makes clear his country's position. What is the dispute between Ethiopia, Sudan and Egypt over the Grand Ethiopian Rings and Sudan? During the talks, Egyptian officials tried to gain Russia's support through the naive watershed red rig. Today we talked over a wide array of different questions such as the Renaissance Dam, and I believe that the recent talks, for example, in Kinshasa, were also part of the conversation today. I listened to the opinion expressed by Mr. Lavrov, and I can tell you that for us, the issue of this dam is a national security issue. It's a priority for us. We're ready to build up consultations and talks in order to find a solution to this problem, which involves three countries. Egypt, Ethiopia, and Sudan. We have a lot of tension hanging in the air and we need to do something with that. 
there should be no unilateral decisions on the part of any of the three states which could harm the interest of another or the other ones. We agree to continue consultations. We believe Russia plays a key role here because Russia is one of the permanent members of the UN Security Council. Addressing the issue, Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov unequivocally pointed out that the disparity over the Grand Ethiopian Renaissance Dam's construction should be settled through the African Union led negotiation. As for the dam in Ethiopia, our Egyptian friends have raised this issue for a long time. We are sincerely interested in the, the resolution of this issue, but it can only be made if all the three countries come together. The other countries need to set up the right environment for this. Our leadership offered technical examination particularly space, satellite, uh, image. We have handed over these footage. The US and the EU and the UN and the African Union were invited as uh, advisors. The African Union is very important. All the three stakeholders are part of the African Union and there's a great African tradition. It's the Africans that decide their issues and shape the future on this and many other issues, including conflicts in Africa. We fully endorse this principle, African solutions to African issues. It is to be recalled that Ethiopia invited the two countries to nominate dam operators for data sharing before the second filling of the dam, though they declined to accept. Ethiopia firmly declared that the second filling is imminent in the coming rainy season. Now, moving to other stories, uh, Belgium has provided 4 million euros to people who are currently in need of humanitarian aid in the right state. The funding will be used for the International Red Cross Committee's project focusing on protection of people affected following the law enforcement operation conducted in the region. Special attention will be paid to victims of sexual violence, according to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Belgium. Now moving on, lots of famous faces are getting involved in a campaign to help save a special forest in Ethiopia. The Future Forest Appeal, run by the charity Tree Aid, aims to provide communities living in the town of Matama, located in the northwest of Ethiopia, with the tools needed to restore around 10,000 hectares of degraded forest. Much of the land in the area has become infertile and unsuitable for growing crops. Trees have disappeared. Temperatures have risen and desert-like conditions are spreading. Celebrities including wildlife expert and conservationist Chris Packham and actress Joanna Lamley and Zoe Wanamaker have all shown their support for the appeal. The Metama forest in Ethiopia is made up of Boswellia trees. They are known for producing a substance called frankincense, which is a precious tree resin that is used in essential oils around the world. Without the necessary actions being taken, it's believed that the forest could become extinct in 20 years, negatively impacting the people living in the Sahel region. The Future Forest Project is part of the wider Greater Green Wall campaign, which is looking to restore 8,000 kilometers of land across the continent of Africa.